She's never seen Star Wars. Ted, the only people in the universe who haven't seen Star Wars are the characters in Star Wars, and that's because they lived them, Ted. That's because they lived the Star Wars. Marshall, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new on the channel and a fan of Star Wars or someone on the fence of Star Wars, which, you know, seems to be the case nowadays, hit that subscribe button. We talk about it because we love it here. And we have good conversations discussing what's going on in a galaxy far, far away. Skeleton Crew is a week, I guess less than a week to go now. It's coming out Monday, December 2nd, a day early on Disney+. Plus. I think this show is actually going to be really good. And not just because I'm a Star Wars shill or because I love Star Wars. But based on the like little tidbits of information that we're getting and the fact that the release date was pushed up to Monday, December 2nd, that's why I'm going to talk more about that on Thursday on the American Thanksgiving on this channel. So stay tuned for that. You'll see that one. I can't wait to talk about that. Today I want to talk about Dave Filoni and the Mandoverse. This is something we're also going to discuss over on the Rebel Scum Podcast channel on Thursday on the Thanksgiving Day. Today I'm going to do a little briefer discussion about it because I'm very excited about this report from Daniel RPK. Extraordinaire scooper Daniel RPK who's come up big with a lot of scoops lately and now he's hitting us with this news that Dave Filoni, Sir Dave Filoni, could be coming out with a new live action series set in the Mandoverse. There's also, he also let something else leak that there's gonna be a new CG animated series happening, which is what I first thought Dave Filoni might be on. But Dave Filoni seems to be more gravitating towards the live action stuff. And he's working very closely and well with John Favreau. I mean, they've had their hiccups here and there, but for the most part, the Mandoverse seems to be the most stable. Whether you like it or not, it's really gotten, you know, their, their stuff has had mostly a beginning, a middle, and an end. They've had their shaky moments, like I said, but I would say that it is a, a positive beat in Star Wars right now and I'm looking forward to more. We also know that Dave Filoni will be having a movie coming out at some point in the near future, distant future. At some point in the future, Dave Filoni is going to be directing a movie that is supposed to culminate all or supposedly culminate all of the Mandover stuff. So if he has an idea for a new Mandover series, it makes complete sense to me that he would want to make this. And he's probably someone that's doing a lot of the green lighting on these series right now. He has a his position at Lucasfilm will allow him to make these decisions, which is why Ahsoka is also getting a season two, which starts production in the spring of 2025. So when this one would start, we don't know. He could also just be developing it, developing it, handing it over to maybe like a Favreau or whatever, and they could have their team of directors from there. I think Lucasfilm, I've said this many, many a times, needs to have a Kevin Feige-esque person at the helm, or now a James Gunn, Peter Safran-esque person at the helm, to dictate kind of what's going on around them. What is your overall story? What are you doing? At least for the next five, ten years. I would say ten years the way things get made. You need to have a plan, a story structure. And the one thing the Mandoverse seems to have is just that, right? We have Thrawn coming up. We have Balin and Shin Hati, which no one really knows exactly what's going on with them. There's obviously talks and speculation that they're leading to Abeloth and other realms of the Force that haven't been explored in live action so much. Stuff that was very near and dear to someone like George Lucas that Dave Filoni worked very closely with. And that's what makes me excited, is that Dave Filoni knows a lot about Star Wars. He worked very closely with George Lucas, but George Lucas had a lot of like very out there concepts for what Star Wars was. It wasn't just the black and the white, the light versus the dark. There was more out there, like the, the Mortis stuff. And of course, Filoni gave us the world between worlds in Rebels, which translated over into live action quite well, I thought, in the Ahsoka series. And that makes me excited to see where the future of Star Wars can be and where it's going. And the Mandoverse, for me, seems to be like the new meat of Star Wars. I know they want Rey. Like, Rey is where they think Star Wars belongs. And I actually think you could do a lot with Rey. I know, you know, the haters say what they want. And people don't think she was properly utilized and she was underdeveloped. And, I, you know, I could even agree with that or some of that or all of that or whatever. But the fact of the matter is you have a character established that you can grow and enhance and, and utilize a lot more and give more depth to that character. Anastasia Ridley is a, a pretty good actress. Like, she's going to bring it for that role. She's going to be, you know, great in that role. We already know that. So why not utilize that? But that all that's a different topic. But what I'm talking about now is this Mandalorian stuff, the Mandoverse. It, this, is, this is what's really hit with fans. Like, the sequels were hit and miss, right? Like, I know they made a billion dollars, but they were very much hit or miss, right? People seem to like The Last Jedi, they hate Rise of Skywalker, people like The Force Awakens, now they're not so high on The Force Awakens, like, it was a mixed bag all around, like, when you step back and look at it, you can say, okay, it had some cool concepts and moments, but it wasn't well received all around, whereas Mando Season 1 and mostly Season 2 
was 100% well received. I mean, okay, nothing's 100%, but it was very, very well received. So you take that as your basis. Like people love the Mandoverse. Okay, they weren't so crazy about Book of Boba Fett. They might not have been crazy about Ahsoka. But now we have Skeleton Crew, which I'm going to do a video on Thursday, like I said, which I think is going to be a really good show. You have Jude Law in there. The Mandoverse is going to thrive, right? It's this time period. And when they say Mandoverse, it's a time period, but also a certain aesthetic that they have. A certain aesthetic for the Mandoverse that feels like Star Wars. It feels like OG Star Wars, but also prequel trilogy Star Wars. Like it has this, like it somehow was able to mix both the original trilogy and the prequels together in a way that I don't think anyone thought was possible when the prequels came out. I thought a lot of people thought that they were, if you don't remember the prequels, people hated those movies and they didn't think they felt like Star Wars at all. Like it didn't look like Star Wars, too much CG, blah, blah, blah. But the Mandoverse has somehow found a way to bleed, blend those two eras of Star Wars together, and I think in a very magnificent, beautiful way, that you don't even notice it. When a prequel droid shows up, when a pit droid from the prequel shows up, it feels natural. When R5 communicates with that, it feels natural. When Grogu communicates with prequel or original trilogy droids or, or speeders or whatever, it always feels natural. And that's what I love about it. And that's why I think you use the foundation established from the Mandoverse to branch out. And I, I've said this a million times, and I'm gonna say it again one more time here. You don't go towards the sequels, though. You go towards a new path, and you lead us somewhere else. And you let us, you, you make aware, like, hey, there's stuff going on over there with Shivp Palpatine over there, right? Like Shivp is doing stuff, but we're going to go over here. We don't worry about that. We got to worry about this threat over here, whether it's Thrawn, the Grisk, Abeloth, whatever. You go over there, and I think the Grisk is prime for it. I always thought they're going to go use on Vong, but I, you know the. The user line has kind of been faded out by Disney and they really want, or the Disney era, I should say, and they really want, I think the Grisk is what they're really going to push. So I can see the Grisk going for it, especially when you have Thrawn out there. And I think there could be a lot of manipulation between Thrawn and the New Republic and how we're going to get to where we get. Because we're also going to get to see the fall of the New Republic too at some point. Like that could still happen, even though, you know, we deal with stuff here, that's still a part of the Mandoverse. So I think there's a lot of strong points in that era and I think utilizing it. And also the other thing too that I don't think has talked about enough is with sticking with this time period is that fans and I mean hardcore fans are one thing but casual fans understand the time period. I think one of the issues with the accolade might also have been that people you know the newcomers to the series looked at it and go well where does this take place? Side Akbar, the holidays are coming up it's Black Friday time and if you're looking for a gift for a loved one, a friend, or a family member, check out Limelight Co. Candles. They are organic, no paraffins, coconut soy. You can get molds. You can get different scents. Check out the website. And if you promo code BLACKFRIDAY10, you'll get 10% off your order. But the Mandoverse, you know, Ahsoka, Boba Fett, and, and Mando, they're all, and now Skeleton Crew, they all take place in this same time period, in like a few months, year, whatever, gap of each other. So you don't have to worry so much about that because you feel like you're watching one cohesive story, which I think Star Wars needs to really figure that out again and become that story. Because Star Wars has never been like Marvel, where there's Iron Man here and Captain America there and Thor there. It's been A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Like it's always been one through line until obviously the Disney takeover, and then we got things in between. But people, I remember going to go see Rogue One, and people were like, so this is Ray's mom when Jyn Erso was on the screen. Like, this, so this is this is Ray's mom. So you have to get away from that. And the Mandoverse, continuing the Mandoverse, continuing these strong stories with these strong characters and doing it. And another weakness that I thought the Mandoverse had were the Rebels characters. I love the characters in Rebels, but I don't think they translated so well in Ahsoka. I mean, mostly I would say... Ezra and, and Sabine were the, were the problematic ones. I think mean, Ezra can be a really great character. They led you to him too much instead of why are we leading to Ezra? Like what is so great about Ezra? We never really got that for casual fans. I don't think they really bought into that. And then Sabine kind of came out of nowhere for casual fans as well. If you follow them through Rebels, obviously you're like, I love this story, let's go. But in terms of where they are for casual fans, that's not there. So doing another Mandover series with these characters gets to expand on them and explore them more and let casual fans know how great these characters are, can be, and should be, and that's what makes me excited. So I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to a new Mandover series. Obviously, Filoni, Favreau's gonna be involved in some capacity, and I think you've got your gold standard of a Star Wars right there in this time period, five years post Return of the Jedi. I would love, look, I would love to move on past sequels. I think there's a whole, obviously, galaxy of time ready to explore there, but right now this is where they are. So let's, let's figure this area out and let's do what the movies weren't able to do and tell stories between the gaps of, of Jedi 
and Force Awakens and what was going on in there. And like I said, don't lead us to Force Awakens, lead us away from there. But what was going on in that time period? And then you can go further and further and further and progress and fans will be on board for whatever journey you are offering as long, of course, as the stories are worth telling. All right, everybody, that's all I got for today. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I hope you are, too. Check out Rebel Scum Podcast on Thursday. We've got a whole day of shows there, morning, afternoon, and evening. And I'll have more right here on Digital Charcuterie. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And may the force of others be with you.